we the jury find by a vote of 10 to 2 that Wade Wilson should be sentenced to death. Dated this 25th day of June, 2024, in Lee County, Florida, four person, 234. In the quiet neighborhoods of Cape Coral, Florida, a sinister series of events unfolded in October 2019 that would leave the community shaken and the nation captivated. This is the story of Wade Wilson, the man convicted of the brutal murders of Christine Melton and Diane Ruiz, and the perplexing phenomenon of his growing fan base on TikTok. On the evening of October 6, 2019, Wade Wilson visited Buddha Live on McGregor Boulevard. His girlfriend at the time, Melissa Montanez, joined him there. She testified that Wilson persistently asked her to accompany him to Jason Shepard's house, a man he had just met. Uncomfortable with the idea, Montanez refused, and Wilson took her car without permission. After Montanez left, Wilson encountered Christine Melton and her friend Stephanie Johnson. Johnson, who later testified in court, recalled that Wilson, then without facial tattoos, introduced himself as Junior and seemed friendly and charming, raising no red flags. Both Johnson and Shepard testified that Wilson and Melton appeared attracted to each other and became intimate at Shepard's residence. Later, Wilson tried to drive the women to Melton's home in Cape Coral, but struggled with the stick shift in Montanez's car. Once they arrived, Johnson left to attend to her child and work, leaving Wilson and Melton together. She testified that Melton hugged and kissed her goodbye, with no concerns for her friend's safety. Police believe Wilson strangled Melton shortly after Johnson's departure. Her body was discovered later that evening. Montanez reported receiving calls from Wilson the next morning on her work phone, asking where she was and if he could meet her. Furious about the previous night's events and wanting her car back, Montanez agreed to meet him in downtown Fort Myers. Accompanied by a friend, Montanez encountered Wilson in Melton's black Nissan Versa. Wilson aggressively tried to pull her into the car, and during the struggle, the car, left in gear, grazed their legs. Montanez testified that Wilson punched, slapped, and choked her. She attempted to reason with him to buy time for the police to arrive. Witnesses reported seeing Montanez dragged up the stairs to her business, where Wilson held her by the throat. Montanez described a moment when Wilson struck her, causing blood to splatter. Using the moment of distraction, she managed to escape. Wilson then drove off in the Nissan. Around 9.30 a.m. to 11 a.m., Wilson returned to Cape Coral, where he encountered Diane Ruiz, a mother of two walking to work. Prosecutors allege Wilson pretended to need directions and coaxed Ruiz into the car, where he then choked her while driving. After driving into an empty lot, he allegedly rolled her out of the car and realizing she was still alive, ran over her multiple times, a gruesome act he later described to detectives. Later that afternoon, Fort Myers police officer Timothy McCormick found Wilson in the black Nissan at Joe's Crab Shack. Wilson appeared nervous and uncooperative, ultimately fleeing when McCormick attempted to detain him. At that time, police were unaware of the murders and thus could not pursue him for a misdemeanor battery charge. Stephanie Johnson received a call from Cape Coral Police that afternoon, inquiring about Melton's whereabouts and the discovery of her car in Fort Myers, sparking her concern. Police forced entry into Melton's home that evening, finding her body wrapped in bedding and clothing. They quickly taped off the area as a crime scene. With assistance from Wilson's father, police located and arrested him at his home. The following day, October 8th, police searched the area around Hector Caffaretta Jr. Elementary School, where Ruiz had last been seen. 
Her purse was turned into the school by a man paying for his children's after-school care. The connection between Ruiz's disappearance and Melton's death was established on October 9th. Police continued to search around the American German Social Club on Pine Island Road. Ruiz's fiance, Scott Hannon, reported detectives had found a person of interest using her phone. On October 10th, Cape Coral Police Sergeant Justin DeRoso and his partner, while searching an empty lot in North Cape Coral, discovered Ruiz's decomposing body, identified by the circling vultures. On November 19th, 2019, Wilson was charged with premeditated murder for the deaths of Christine Melton and Diane Ruiz. Despite the horrific nature of his crimes, Wade Wilson has inexplicably garnered a following on TikTok. Videos featuring his image and case details have gone viral, with some users expressing admiration and fascination. The phenomenon of women being attracted to convicted murderer Wade Wilson, like other cases where criminals gain a following, can be attributed to several factors. This occurrence is often seen in cases involving high-profile criminals and is known as hybristophilia. Hybristophilia, Bonnie and Clyde syndrome, is a condition where individuals are sexually attracted to people who have committed outrageous crimes. This attraction can stem from a variety of reasons, including a desire for excitement or a sense of danger. Dr. Catherine Ramsland, a forensic psychologist, explains that some women are drawn to the notion of reforming or saving a person who has committed such crimes. High-profile criminal cases often receive extensive media coverage, which can sensationalize the criminal and make them appear more glamorous or intriguing. Social media platforms can also amplify this effect by creating a community of followers who share a fascination with the criminal. The case of Wade Wilson went viral on social media, leading to increased attention and a fan base that romanticizes his image and story. Some individuals are attracted to people who are famous or infamous because it can give them a sense of importance or connection to a high-profile figure. In the case of criminals like Wade Wilson, the notoriety can create a celebrity status in certain circles. The association with someone who is widely known, even for negative reasons, can be appealing to some people as it provides a sense of drama and significance in their lives. Some women may have underlying psychological traits or fantasies that make them more susceptible to being attracted to criminals. These can include low self-esteem, a desire for control or power, or an attraction to bad boy personas. Dr. Ramsland notes that the idea of being the significant other of a notorious person can be a powerful fantasy as it allows these individuals to feel special or unique. The thrill and danger associated with being involved with a criminal can be a significant factor. For some individuals, the adrenaline rush of being connected to a person who has committed serious crimes can be enticing. This desire for excitement can override the logical understanding of the criminal's actions and lead to romanticized perceptions. In summary, the attraction to Wade Wilson by some women can be explained by a combination of psychological conditions, media influence, a desire for notoriety, and underlying fantasies or traits. These factors together create a complex and often disturbing phenomenon where criminals gain a following despite their heinous actions. While Wade Wilson's case has become a disturbing fascination for some, it is essential to remember the real victims and the lasting pain inflicted on their families.